G'day folks, welcome back. Busy week for us on the farm this week, despite all the rainfall that we've had. Um, it's been, yeah, quite wet, which is unusual really for July. Usually July in the tropics is blue skies, cool mornings, cool evenings, but warm during the day. And it's just a pleasure to be outside and you get lots done. But so far, for July, we've had quite a bit of out of season rainfall, which has stopped us getting out and doing things. But however, we still managed to do some boundary clearing and have a couple of fires. Now we're getting stuck into the jackfruit pruning and chipping. So yeah, even though it's been raining, we've still managed to find breaks, obviously, because we've got all of that done this week. Still quite a bit of jackfruit pruning to finish. And um, I shouldn't complain though, because they are forecasting an El Nino later on this year. So they've been pretty confident with that forecast. And it looks like we are in for quite a dry period coming up. So I shouldn't complain about the rain because in a few months time we might be praying for it. Well it's that time of the year again. Time to get some chuck manure out. So we do this four times a year as well as uh, Foliar fertilising, yeah, we put the chuck manure out, this is, um, it's a commercial chuck manure because that way it has been composted, so raw chicken manure is classed as a hot fertiliser, it's high in nitrogen and that we don't want, so uh, this is all composted Put this out it's as well as fertilizer it's helping to uh, increase the organic matter in the soil and the organic matter is what encourages all your soil life and helps with uh, holding on to the fertilizer so each tree gets uh, a set amount and then we'll Mow, get the grass on top of it, and there's rains coming in in a couple of days' time, so that'll wet everything down nicely. So the job for me today is carrying on trying to sort out this uh, boundary. As you can see in there, there's just heaps and heaps of weedy trees that have... Uh, Shooted and because it's so crowded, they just grow really tall, thin, lanky, not much strength. And what ends up happening is they start to lean out to try and get the sunlight. So, what I did yesterday is a tap down there. Leaving some of the native type trees so that there's, there is nice windbreak but it's not overly crowded. Some of these trees had come down. So start to work my way up there now. That's this morning's job, get them all out. And everything that we pull out, we are chipping down and putting more mulch out here, uh, thereby we're kind of utilising all that stuff. Um, this year, by all accounts, is predicted to be El Nino, so really, really dry summit. So the more protection we can get on the soil, the better. So it's all been chipped and amongst these and when we prune 
that will be chipped down as well. Get as much mulch as we can. <clears throat> we can use, um, we can get hay bales. Yeah, I can get hay bales. The problem with the putting out thick straw is it creates a mat. So it will protect to a certain degree until it gets really, really dry. But then when it's really dry and it's formed that thin mat, when you do get rain, the rain kind of runs off it and doesn't get down to the root system until it's really, really heavy, heavy rain. So if we can, I like to use the chip down warden leaves because that's um, it, it doesn't form a mat. So that's my job for this morning. Cut all those trees out and then this afternoon I'll get them all chipped down onto more of these trees. And Angela's job, if you can see the she's burning out a tree stump there and She's using all this uh, old dead wood, which then will clear this area, which makes it easier for me to mow between the trees then, and then stops all these uh, weed trees coming up. You see, there's a couple there that have come just because you, I can't get into mow because of all this stuff, then seedlings start to shoot off. So she's clearing all this out. Down there, she's waving. Hello. Hello. She's there. Um, yeah, dragging out. There's another pal there that she's dealing with. But yeah, I'm going to burn out that stump, clear all this. This is the last um, main job down here. We spent last winter clearing out so that um, we still have the windbreak, but it it doesn't become really dense. Once it gets to the point where you can't mow in there, more seedlings keep dropping and slowly it moves its way further and further and then you start losing your own paddock. So today we are continuing to prune the jackfruits and thin out the fruit. And I'm just gonna explain what it is that we're doing. So this tree in front of me, Ian has already pruned. It has got the amount of fruit on it that we want to keep. So we don't want too many fruit because we want to encourage the fruit to become a decent size and they will keep flowering and fruiting. So it's important that we keep coming round and thinning out any excess, just leaving the ones we want. So this tree has got those four there and one up there. So we've got five, we're happy with that. So now we can prune all the excess off this tree which Ian has already done. Now in comparison you can see with this tree that it is more uh, congested than the other tree it's not quite as opened up and that's because we haven't been able to prune this one yet. It is fruiting but some of the fruit are still in the pollination stage and so for that reason we need to leave the male flowers, which you can see there, in order to pollinate the females. Once all the females have been pollinated and we're happy that we've got the right amount of fruit for this tree, we're happy with the shape of the fruit, then we can come round and we can start and take off some of this excess. So things like this will be able to come off, but at the moment, they can't because they're carrying our male flowers. So all of these little branches, lots and lots of male flowers, and they are going to pollinate our females. And until we're happy with what we've got, so I'll show you just one in here. This one has finished being pollinated, but as you can see, the shape is not so good. So we're not really happy with that one. So what we'll probably do is cut that one off and then let the one behind it develop and make sure that we're happy with that. But in order for that to happen, we need the male flowers to pollinate those females. So this is a tree that for now we can't really prune. 
So this is why we have to continually come round and check the jackfruit trees for fruit. Can anyone spot the sneaky little jackfruit? So just from the outside, you wouldn't even see that. And especially when they're small. And because this one has now got a little bit bigger and we're coming round and doing some pruning, we notice this one that has flowered and fruited on quite a thin branch. So that will need to come off. So this is where we're up to. This is the nice big mess that Ian's currently creating. <laughs> um, and we tend to, we all prune a couple of rows and then we'll bring the chip around and we'll chip all of this back onto the jackfruit mounds. I don't make a big mess. So we do prune with hand secateurs sometimes for the small thin stuff, yeah. but generally Ian will use the Infoco pruner, electric pruner. I'll and there's something more in depth about this, because it makes it so much easier. Yeah, and we've since gone out and got the extension pole for that yeah. pruner as well, which Ian's using now, so we can actually reach those taller branches without having to use ladders and that sort of thing. Makes pruning a lot quicker. Okay, I've changed my hat so that I can put my ear defenders on. Time to get chipping. Well, all the chipping is finished and mulched back onto the rows. So hopefully that will help us out if we do get an El Nino and we have drier than normal conditions. The mulching should certainly help. Still got some pruning to go, but that was thirsty work and I'm hungry. So time to go and get some grub. And this afternoon probably put this video together for you guys. Just want to say thank you again to everyone that is liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. It really means a lot to us. And we're over 970 subscribers now. And we honestly never thought that our little channel would get there. I know it doesn't sound like much. Some channels have got thousands and thousands of subscribers. <laughs> um, but we're really pleased. And we're not far off the thousand milestone. So looking forward to reaching that. But 
time to go and get some tucker. Bye.